Hello and welcome to this video lesson on areas of triangles. Our learning goal for this lesson is I can analyze the areas of triangles. Our language goals are I can talk about finding the area of triangles using words like measure, area, triangle, base, height, half, and divided by. Before we start talking about the areas of triangles though, let's review what we already know about area. We know that to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the length by the width. And we saw that we can cut a parallelogram along its height and drag the resulting triangular shape to the opposite side to rearrange the parallelogram as a rectangle. This helped us relate the area of parallelograms to the area of rectangles. And so we learned that to find the area of a parallelogram, we multiply the base by the height. With that in mind, let's start out with rectangles again. I have two rectangles here that I've cut out of colored paper. They both have a length of four centimeters and a width of eight centimeters. Let's take this rectangle and fold it along a line joining the opposite corners like this. Okay, so I've folded the triangle along a line joining the opposite corners like so. Now, pause for a moment and think about what will happen if we cut along this fold. What two shapes will we get? That's right, we'll get triangles. Now. I'm going to cut along the line and take a closer look. What kind of triangles do I have? Did you say right triangles or right angle triangles? If you did, you're right because this triangle has a right angle, a 90 degree angle where two perpendicular lines meet. So we call it a right triangle or a right angle triangle because of that right angle. Now for my next question, are these two triangles congruent? Remember that congruent means exactly the same sides and angles. Now, did you say yes, the triangles are congruent? If so, that's the correct answer. But you might be asking yourself, how does she know that it's the correct answer? I didn't see her use a ruler to measure the sides to make sure they're exactly the same. I didn't see her use a protractor to measure the angles. So how does she know that they're congruent? Well, I used a little trick. Because congruent shapes are identical in every way, that is, their sides and angles are exactly the same, you can tell if they're congruent by placing one on top of the other. If they fit exactly, they are congruent. Okay, so let's pause here and think about what we've discovered so far. If we take a rectangle and cut it in half along a line joining the opposite corners, we get two identical or congruent right triangles. That's kind of cool to know. Now, how can we use this new discovery to help us think about the area of triangles? Let's think about this a little bit more. I know the dimensions of the rectangles I started with were four centimeters and eight centimeters. If I use my formula for the area of a rectangle, area equals length times width, I get 32 square centimeters for the area of this rectangle. But how can we use this new discovery to help us think about the area of triangles? I think we need to think about it a bit more. Now, I know the dimensions, the rectangles I started with were four centimeters and eight centimeters. And if I use my formula for the area of a rectangle, which is area equals length times width, I get 32 square centimeters for the area of this rectangle. Now, here's my whole rectangle that I didn't cut. Its area is 32 square centimeters. And here's my other rectangle, which I cut in half to make two congruent triangles. If I place both triangles back together, I know their area totals 32 square centimeters. And because each triangle is exactly half of the original rectangle, I can figure out the area of one triangle. Since it's exactly half of the original rectangle, its area must be half of the original rectangle or 16 square centimeters. All right, so that works for right triangles with one right angle, but what about other kinds of triangles? 
Let's try it out with an isosceles triangle. Remember, an isosceles triangle has two equal sides and two equal angles. Okay, here we have an isosceles triangle. And if we cut it in half along its height, we get two smaller triangles. We can rearrange the two smaller triangles alongside our original triangle to make a rectangle. Just like this. One. Two. In this example, the rectangle is five centimeters wide and one, two, three centimeters tall. We can say its base is five centimeters and its height is three centimeters. It's easy to see now that the rectangle's area is double the area of the triangle since we had to double the triangle to make the rectangle. Okay, so that's right triangles and isosceles triangles sorted. Now, what about a really tough triangle? One with no equal sides and no equal angles. Yes, I'm talking about a scalene triangle. Let's visualize a scalene triangle. It has three sides with different lengths and three different angles. Our example here has sides measuring four centimeters, five centimeters, and eight centimeters, and angles measuring 23 degrees, 30 degrees, and 127 degrees. That meets the criteria for scalene triangles. No equal sides and no equal angles. Okay, so how can we use our understanding of the areas of rectangles to help us here with our scalene triangle? Well, we can't, but that doesn't mean we don't have any tools. What happens if we copy this triangle and rotate it 180 degrees? Hmm, that sure looks like a familiar shape, doesn't it? So what shape do we get if we line up two congruent scalene triangles along the same side? I'm doing it with the longest side in this example, but as long as you always line up the same two sides, this will work. Here's an example. See that shape? If we line up these two sides here, we see that shape. And I'm gonna go back to the two longest sides, which is what I started with. So what do we get? That's right, we get a parallelogram. And we know how to find the area of a parallelogram, right? Yes, we do. In fact, we have a formula for finding the area of a parallelogram. What is the formula for finding the area of a parallelogram again? Well, that formula is area equals base times height. So if we know that one triangle is exactly half the area of this parallelogram, do we have enough information to find the area of the triangle? Yeah, we do. It's exactly half the area of the parallelogram. We know the base of our parallelogram was four centimeters. And we can calculate the height of the parallelogram by counting the squares in our centimeter grid. One, two, three, four. That gives us a height of four centimeters. So since our parallelogram is four centimeters by four centimeters, and our formula is area equals base, times height, we can just say that our area is four centimeters times four centimeters, and that is 16 square centimeters. So to find the area of one of these identical congruent scalene triangles, we divide 16 by two, which gives us eight. And the area of our scalene triangle is eight square centimeters. Now we know that the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. And we just demonstrated that the area of a triangle is half the area of a rectangle. So let's see if we can figure out a formula for the area of a triangle, since we know that ultimately what we want to do is to find the fastest and most efficient way of figuring things out in math, right? So to find the area of triangles, we can write out a formula that looks like this. The area of a triangle is the same as the area of a rectangle divided by two, or the area of a triangle equals the area of a rectangle divided by two. 
Since we know how to find the area of a rectangle, we can replace the words area of rectangle by that formula. So let's erase the words area of rectangle in the second formula and write area of triangle equals width of rectangle times height of rectangle, that's our formula, divided by two. Now, since we know that the width of the rectangle is the same as the base of the triangle, and the height of the rectangle is the same as the height of the triangle, we can make the formula even simpler. Area of triangle equals base times height divided by two. And to make it even simpler, area of a triangle equals B times H divided by two. Fun fact, this formula is also written as base times height over two or one half base times height. Let's review everything we learned in this lesson. First of all, we learned that we can apply our understanding of the areas of parallelograms to help us understand the areas of triangles. When we cut a parallelogram along one of its lines of symmetry, we saw that it made two congruent or identical triangles. Whoops, there we go. That's congruent and identical. And when we rearranged pairs of congruent triangles, we saw that we could make parallelograms. Remember, rectangles are parallelograms too. These explorations helped us discover that the area of a triangle can be interpreted relative to the area of a parallelogram. And from this, we discovered that the area of a triangle is half of the area of a parallelogram with the same base and height. Finally, we derived a useful formula to help us find the areas of triangles. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or one half base times height, or base times height over two. Thanks for watching, and remember, the only way to learn math is to do math. Thank you.